Hi, this is The Daily Design with Denise Matthew, the place to get human design microbursts of information, discussions, and energy alerts that can help you navigate an unpredictable world. So let's get into it. This is episode six, 2027 and the Cross of the Sleeping Phoenix, part two. In episode five, we talked a little bit about 2027 and how the cross of the sleeping phoenix would herald in the new energy that we would be working with for the new global cycle. Today, we're going to be continuing on with the same theme and explore another gate in the cross of the sleeping phoenix, the gate 55. But before we get into that, let's briefly talk about this energy that we have been working with, this cross of planning, and how it has played out in the world all around us. The cross of planning is made up of the gate 37, the gate 40, the gate 16, and also the gate 9. And because of the opposition of the gate 37 and also the gate 40, in other words, they're opposite and the mandala, but they also make up a full channel. This channel gives us emotional willpower. The 3740 channel is tribal energy, and it's about community, making deals with people and even countries. And it's usually connecting with people or even countries that are different than you, making a deal based on money or value of what you give and what you receive. And we could look at this as being global partnerships that we see that are quite prevalent in 2022 and have been for many years. But we can also see that these global partnerships are also falling apart. In fact, this energy of the 3740 could have played a very integral role in how we have been able to set up a global network like we have right now. Another part of 2027 that Ra Uruhu talked about that plays into what we're experiencing on a global theme right now is called the precision of the equinox and where he said the lines move clockwise while all the planetary transits move counterclockwise. This highlights the idea that in the 1960s, we moved into what was called a first line energy or a first line theme where anybody who carried a first line profile was said to have a flowering. Ra Uruhu said that he himself had a flowering in that particular time. If we look at the first line and the theme that it actually comes with, we can see that it is always about building a foundation for that particular gate. And if we connect it to all the gates of the cross of planning, and just talk about the keywords that represent each gate, we could see that the keywords can explain a lot of the places that we were building foundations. We were focusing on skills, the gate 16 and also the gate nine, and building partnerships that would bring abundance and material wealth, the channel 3740, the channel of community, but also an energy that was completely connected with the concept of making more material abundance, partnerships, and also material wealth. So the place that we are right now in 2022 really makes sense based on the cross that we were working with up until now. Now, if we look at the gate 55 as another gate that is in the cross of the sleeping Phoenix, where we're going in the future, we can see something completely different because now we're moving from tribal and also logical collective energy into purely individual energy, which says, when you feel empowered, you empower others around you. And how you feel empowered is when you share your spirit with the world or your authenticity or the true expression of your unique self. The gate 55 line six is called selfishness. And that is another word that not many people really seem to like. But just like many words in human design, there is much more to the selfishness that we're talking about when we're talking about the energy of the gate 55. Here, we might call this divine selfishness, where when your needs are met, then you can reach out and help others have their needs met as well. This is a concept that you are serving other people from a full cup, not one that's been depleted because you've given so much and haven't given anything back to yourself. We could say that individuality drinks from the cup of empowerment and in doing so spreads empowerment to others through your aura. In the current world, material abundance is needed. And when we see it through the spirit of this energy, it isn't about greed. It's about recognizing that the fullest expression of abundance of what abundance in life looks like is really about saying, put your oxygen mask on before you do it for others. And by your example, others can find their own path to abundance. And when your body is fed, your spirit 
is also nurtured. In many ways, this flies in the face of people who say that a spiritual path means a path of poverty or austerity, and instead says that the mundane must mingle with the spiritual path to find the greatest awareness in this incarnation and your own personal truth. From a global perspective, this can be connected to food and how we get our abundance, where we can look at a more self-sufficient approach to how we feed ourselves. This is already a trend that can be seen where people are living off the grid and deciding how they will meet their needs on their own terms. From preppers to growing a micro garden, there are a multitude of ways that this energy can express through humanity. Current supply chain issues and food insecurity already are pointing a finger at our need to become accountable for how we continue to thrive in changing times. This sense of self-sufficiency might be exactly what we need to navigate the current times and move into our future. This has been The Daily Design with Denise Matthew. Thank you for being here. Until next time, take care and I'll see you again soon.